Okay, thank you for the opportunity to present today. Um, a pilot study that we are currently undertaking to answer the question, does a rapid response system improve score to door time in a paediatric hospital? So the past three decades have seen an upsurge of patient safety measures in healthcare, focusing on early recognition, escalation and management of the deteriorating patient. Rapid response systems, medical emergency teams, track and trigger charts, early warning scores and intensive care outreach services are amongst the numerous schemata aiming to protect patients and reduce adverse events in hospitals. These systems evolved due to the recognition of a period of physiological abnormality preceding critical deterioration that provides practitioners with a window of opportunity for detection, escalation and intervention. Evaluation of the impact of rapid response systems has proven difficult, with the bulk of evidence focusing on reduction of cardiac arrests and hospital mortality. The use of outcome measures of cardiac arrests and deaths does not transcribe easily to paediatrics due to the inherently low baseline rates of these events in children. And in addition to this, outcome measures are not standardised in the reported paediatric studies. The hypothesis for our study is that improved recognition and escalation to the intensive care outreach service with the introduction of a track and trigger system is improving outcomes for deteriorating children. A new metric has been proposed to define the time taken from the first recognised deterioration on the ward to the time of ICU contact and ICU admission and this is termed score to door. Our hospital has had a PICU outreach service since 2005 coordinated by a growing team of nurse practitioners, currently up to a team of five full-time NPs. There is not currently enough of us to cover 24-7, so outside of our hours, a PICU registrar, who also has a patient load in the ICU, and a senior nurse cover the outreach. Our PICU NP role has evolved over the years and continues to evolve, with a focus on the deteriorating child in hospital. Early in 2011, the Between the Flags track and trigger system was introduced in our hospital as the pilot site for paediatrics in New South Wales. Our already established PICU outreach service was heavily involved in the development and rollout of this. Each hospital has their own locally developed rapid response system based on available resources. And in our rapid response system, red zone equals a rapid response call. We have a two-tiered system split into a rest or rapid response call as this slide illustrates with the team components of the two options. The PICU outreach service can also be contacted directly for referral and we continue to follow up patients previously seen for deterioration or after PICU discharge. The whole premise of any rapid response system is to intervene early in the slippery slope of patient deterioration. We had hoped that our PICU outreach service was providing intervention not too far on the downhill slope prior to the track and trigger BTF introduction. Some of the outcome measures described for successful rapid response systems are reduced cardiac arrests, mortality, PICU admission and dose. Now for those who are not familiar with the term dose, it is now the standardised reporting method for rapid response utilisation as the total number of activations per 1,000 hospital admissions. This dose measurement assesses the rate of crisis detection and response activation. Mature rapid response systems reported in the literature claim an effective dose between 26 and 56 calls per 1,000 admissions. This is our dose experience. Um, the graph shows our increasing dose over the last nine years and also the static admission rate to the PICU. Of note, our dose last year stepped up compared to the previous four years and far exceeded the range of reported dose for mature rapid response systems. And this raises the possibility that perhaps we may now be overdosing and we need to investigate the reasons and the impact of this. In terms of outcomes for calls, you can either remain on the ward, you can be admitted to the PICU as either high dependency or intensive care, or you can die. And obviously that's what we don't want to happen. As you can see, most patients stay on the ward and this may be with PICU outreach follow-up. Of those that come to the ICU, the majority come as high dependency rather than intensive care. And for the last two years, we have had no unexpected deaths on the ward. So then to look at our mortality, the green bars are all hospital mortality, low and fairly static. 
The pink bars are overall PICU mortality for all PICU admissions. Um, and the blue bars is the mortality for the PICU admit, admitted PICU outreach patients. So these are the patients who deteriorated on the ward prior to PICU admission. And when we graph the relationship between our dose and mortality in children admitted from the ward after deterioration and PICU outreach attendance, we can see that there is a trend that mortality decreases with increasing dose. Whilst this is not direct evidence of causality, the strength of this association suggests that a relationship does exist between PICU outreach rapid response system dose and mortality in this cohort of patients in our hospital. So how can this relationship be explained? Some more background about this relationship and the, the data that we now want to investigate. We keep getting called, our dose is going up, we think dose impacts mortality and that there is a relationship between dose and delayed calling of PICU outreach rapid response team. The existing literature on timing of rapid response team calls is all in adults. Um, this study out of Brazil in 2013 showed that a delay in MET call was significantly associated with high mortality with hypoxia and hypotension as the main activation triggers delayed. And the global multi-centre study across 17 ICUs concluded that score to door time seemed largely independent of illness severity and suggested that admission delays were due to organisational rather than patient factors. Measuring score to door time could be used as a benchmarking tool for rapid response systems. If it's true that delay increases mortality and morbidity, then score to door time is a way to describe the delay. Score to door times have not been studied in paediatric populations. So our study aim is to ascertain the relationship between the score to door time and patient outcomes for paediatric patients admitted to the intensive care unit after deteriorating on the ward. Our hypothesis is in that in the presence of a mature rapid response system, the time from recognition of deterioration on the ward to intensive care admission for critically ill children is shortened, and shortening of the score to door time is associated with reduced PICU mortality. So the premise for our study is that for a mature rapid response system, as dose increases, score to door time decreases, and thus mortality decreases. Our methodology is respect, retrospective chart review of random sample 50 patients from different year cohorts. The years chosen with existing PICU outreach for pre, track and trigger BTF, and then post the BTF introduction, and then post electronic BTF introduction. Uh, we included all children that were admitted to the PICU after deterioration on an inpatient ward, and we excluded any children that were admitted from the emergency department, operating theatres, or those transferred in from other hospitals. Our data collection involved retrospective interrogation of routine data from the hospital electronic medical record and the intensive care database. Uh, it was transcribed onto a study data form and then input into a central um, database for analysis. We selected a random 50 of the total numbers for the three-year cohort. Um, the times that we looked at included time from first altered physiology to time of contact with the PICU outreach service and then subsequent PICU admission. Uh, altered physiology was defined as one or more red zone criteria on the observation chart or three yellow zone criteria. If no altered physiology was recorded, then time of first referral to the PICU outreach was used as time of altered physiology as a surrogate for high level of clinical concern. Our, re our results are preliminary and we're still in the process of analysing them. Um, so demographics of the overall group showed that the patients selected for our study generally reflect the types of patients that we see in the PICU um, with respiratory illnesses as the most common admission diagnoses. When we look more carefully at the individual year cohorts, uh, we, we have some concerns that limiting our sample to randomly selected 50 patients from each year means that our cohorts may not be sufficiently well matched to draw a final conclusion. There are differences in median age um, for each group and we're not sure if this is significant yet. And there's quite a different length of stay in the middle cohort. And in our small pilot study, there is discrepancy between PICU mortality and hospital mortality, so that each of the cohorts appear different in this regard. It's clear that we need to look at more patients from those years to investigate this further. Again, this is a pre preliminary result, looking at our median score-to-door time in hours. 
Our key finding is that the score to door time has decreased significantly in the serial cohort studied, um, but we note that the range is extremely wide. This is shown here in, in a different view in this box and whisker plot for the three cohorts. Um, to explain this to those of you who are unfamiliar with this type of chart, firstly note that the years start with the most recent and the earliest cohort pre-track and trigger BTF at the bottom. The bars are capped at 30 minutes, but actually the maximum value to the right is far greater as you saw from the ranges in the previous slide. Um, in this type of chart, the green boxes represent 50% of the patients with the first 25% taken out and the last 25% taken out, equaling our interquartile range. What is important to note is the line you see in the green box represents the median time from first recorded physiological derangement to pick you outreach or rapid response team contact. These data are preliminary and direct comparison of the cohorts in this way may not be justified as there are significant differences in patient demographics in the samples randomly chosen for analysis in each year. Nevertheless, it is observable that the median time is reduced in each of the cohorts. So we now plan to clean all of the data and look further at all patients in these three-year cohorts plus other years and to relate the score to door time to mortality and other patient outcomes. As mentioned, this is preliminary data. We are just getting started at evaluating our score to door time to better understand our PQ outreach and rapid response system um, so that we may be able to definitively answer the question, does a rapid response system improve score to door time in a paediatric hospital? I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues sharing and supporting this project, in particular Dr. Eno Festa and Lucy Kane. Thank you.